All right, in a moment we're going to look at hydrogen and how it explodes, and hydrogen and oxygen combine to combust. Now, this is the new electron flood theory. I'm showing that light can accelerate, and light is a particle. That's the acceleration. There's obviously no question that that light wave, which a wave is created because it's a magnetic particle. This is the particle. That's the particle that's coming out, and we would never see that particle because it's tucked in this wave. However, when we accelerate it, just like a jet fighter pulls out of the wave, that's exactly what happened. That, and then it exploded here. And not only that, the, because of the exact structure of that venturi, the black particle could not come through, but only the white ones. And the white ones created the showers that CERN wants to see. And they can only create them under just the accidental conditions, really, is what it is. We did it accidentally as well. But we can, I know how we did it. They, they don't know how they did it. They just see these particles and they say, ooh, look at those particles. Well, I know where those particles came from. What they're looking for is the black and the white ball, which is attached to each other. Now, a photon has two of them here and then two of them this way, so it's back to back. Now, when they hit another medium, the black one goes on its way and the electron turns into a shower. There it is right there. This is exactly identical to what they want. The black one's never changed. This is dark matter. The exact same size, exactly identical. Now, there's a new law. Dark matter does not compress. They've always said dark matter does not reflect, it does not emit, it does not absorb. That's what dark matter is. So you never see it. Also, it does not compress. The white portion does compress, and I can prove this. The black does not compress and will not come through this slot. The white compresses and explodes. And that's what they have seen and have never been able to understand because when they collide things, there are hundreds of billions of particles and all they have is debris. And they see these particles and they see them occasionally enough to where they say they must be sub, these must be the tiniest particles. I agree. But they didn't, they don't have any idea where they came from. I know exactly where they came from. Let me show you. Okay, listen to this. This guy is good. I like this guy. He's trying to understand the explosion of hydrogen. Hydrogen explosions in slow motion, trying to understand the periodic table. Now, listen to his words about electric light bulb. This is fabulous. Periodic videos. This guy's a smart guy. Here he goes. That as the flame touches the balloon, the reaction goes really fast. The balloon lights up like an electric light bulb. You hear that? Lights up like an electric light bulb. And you watch. He's exactly correct. Because it, it, all it's doing is the hydrogens are giving off electric light. That's el electricity. It's breaking them down into those electrons. They, they, every hydrogen is like this. But once you hit the spark and they start to fall apart, they have nowhere else to go but fall into little tiny pieces. And every one of them takes up its own space and pushes everybody else away from it. That's what the expansion is and that's what the glow is because push to shove. Just like our light hitting through that Venturi. Identical. Watch. Before it's lost its shape. You see that thing go? Look at this. This is fabulous. I, I, I just can't get enough of this kind of stuff. <laughs> Before it's lost its shape at all. Ooh. And then it slowly spreads the, the bright light, which is much brighter than with the hydrogen by itself. All right. That's, this is they're showing just the hydrogen portion and where it's moving away. Now, this is the hydrogen with the oxygen. Now, I don't know how they separated that out. They must have some spectrum way of doing it. But anyway, um, everything is pushed to shove. Because the reactions go faster, so the temperature goes up much higher. And what's interesting is that the flame separates into two parts from the point where you add the match. This is actually quite a well-known effect when there are gas explosions in people's houses, when they light them. Yeah, it's push to shove. They're pushing apart. It's, it's the expansion of each gas 
pushing this one and this one going here and this one in the middle it's just it's everything is pushed to shove the electrons as they are escaping and taking up their own magnetic regions they push everybody else away in their magnetic regions and that's white to white that's where you get the white glow to match when there's gas in their house very often the person who lights the match is okay because the explosion spreads away from them and it does huge damage and they're left in the middle feeling a bit stupid because the house has gone. It really <laughs> looks as if Paul is right. That is that the reaction goes completely differently. I really feel that I have learned something about this reaction. I was talking to quite a senior physicist yesterday over lunch and he was amazed that the balloon would burst and the rubber disappeared before the hydrogen caught fire. And so was I, because it all happened so fast that normally one doesn't see this, and your gut feeling is that hydrogen explodes easily, so of course it'll blow up long before the balloon does. All right, that was good, and uh, I appreciate doing this. And I, and I do it under the um, Fair Use Act just to comment on what's being said about science and you know that's my realm and it's fabulous and if you want to see anything in slow motion you should watch the slow-mo guys and they're on YouTube it's just uh, slow-mo I forget their names there's two guys together really really good and I did one a while back about implosion and they should set off a firecracker underwater and it creates a cavity a cavitation from the explosion and when it comes back it is just spectacular and you see all the light particles doing their thing it's amazing to see what you can see in slow motion as you just saw all right well something i want you to know i studied all of this stuff and i saved all my papers and when i wrote them i wrote them so that i could understand them when i was done and go back to them and refer to them and i have books and books and books of different experiments and all the different stuff I did like this is on thin film thin film compression and how different I mean all of these different tabs are different topics and they all relate to one another and then this is the electron flood theory and it goes on and on and on anyway and this was 50 years ago trying to understand heat and the reactions of heat and how they dissipated depending upon how many electrons were in the water they call that the, um, you know, the pH of the water. And it all ended up being electrical power. Everything there is is electricity. There is nothing that isn't electricity. So my point being about this is do your own research and save your papers. When you go in to get a job, say, let me tell you something. I didn't go and get a piece of paper from Yale to say that I would say exactly what they told me to say. I did my own research, and here's my papers. If, I, if you're going to get a job somewhere, Present them with your work. Don't go in and say, oh, I went to some school that told me to say this, and now I'm smart. That's not going to float anymore. That's done. That case is closed. Okay, so I have shown you that we can separate the muons from the electron showers. And you say, well, big deal, Roger. What's that? So what? Who cares? Well, I care because not only that, we created atomic fission on the tabletop. That's fission and that's fusion. When they come apart it's fission, when they go back together it's fusion. And that means that we have increased the energy value of this wave which is almost no value whatsoever back here. As it starts to approach the Venturi it's and then it explodes here. This particle value back here is almost nothing. Here it's 207 times the value that it was back here. So that means if we can harvest this right here, where we got 200 times more energy than we had here, not 200%, 200 times, if we can harvest that with just basically a solar collector, we have free energy. This is what is required right now. Okay, my friends, so this is what it means is that we using the new electron flood model and actually seeing the particles actually divide we can get 200 times more energy than we put into this if this works correctly is what they say if we can create the muons and the electron showers which we have we should be able to harvest this energy and re, re 
replenish the power for the laser and just keep it run perpetually. Free energy, absolutely free. You know, and this is very, the most cheap stuff you can buy now is lasers a dime a dozen. That is almost free, the Venturi, and this is just simply a solar panel and a very cheap one too not even the is as expensive as the ones they put out on the street and this is only a little tiny thing this will only be the size of a shoe box this is this can do all of that if we can increase this by 200 times it's absolutely stunning the amount of electrons that will flow absolutely stunning so i see no reason not to take advantage of this and um as to date, it's, I'm having a very hard time getting anybody paying attention. But anyway, let's go forward. We'll take a look at the hydrogen and how all of this, these particles divide. Now, we're down into the photon level. Hydrogen and oxygen is the atomic level, which is even hydrogen is 1,830 times bigger than one of these particles, one of those electrons. And when I say an electron, here's here, let's just... Be sure that you understand, because this is critical. Everything there is is made out of this particle. That particle is normally these two pieces attached together. The only way we were able to separate them is because of this Venturi. This is very, very unusual, and that is what CERN and all of them have seen, but they have no idea about it. We know it because we started with light, not with protons, which are 1,839 times bigger. And they have billions of them at a time. When they smash, they just have debris. So they have no idea where to start. I know that we started with light, and I could see the photons, the back-to-back -back photons. They're coming right straight down. That is the photon right there. Bam! It was a four box right there until it exploded and divided. So we know where we started. We know where we ended. We know we have fission. We know we have fusion. We know we have literally atomic explosion here. Look at the energy value here. Just look at how stunning it is compared to what it started with. Just pay attention to what you literally see, and then everything will be obvious. And then we can get free energy, and we can save, literally save the world. If you can have free energy, I don't care what happens after that. You grow your own food, you can clean your water, you can heat, you can air condition, you can um, stop combusting all of these combustion gases that are causing our, our envelope of gases to expand so drastically. You know, all of this can be uh, taken care of with this technology, and right at this moment, it's refused by the people that are trying to claim that they are looking for every possible solution. Well, I don't see that at all. All right, we're going to talk about hydrogen and how it explodes and the colors it makes and the, how, how explosive it is in a second. But I just want you to know, this is right after I got out of the Army. I was in that Nike Hercules missiles in the Army, so I had a big thing going on with... Um, you know, quantum and all that business, because it was brand new then, absolutely brand new. Now, I came up with the fact that there could not be just a huge positive core. And this was, this was a paper I did to finally present that there was no such a thing as a giant positive proton in the center, and absolutely not. It's an electro, everything was electrostatic in nature. It means columbic forces. That means positives and negatives, not just a plus here or and then a negative over there by itself. No, it doesn't happen. I said the regards, the re considerations must be made repulsive forces between nuclei and repulsive forces between electrons, attractive forces between the nucleus of A and B, and it went on and on and on. And on. And, but the bottom line was that there was no such thing as, as a single pole. They, they were, everything is a dipole. Now, in the light experiments we just did, we can separate that pole, but just for an uh, instant. But anyway, uh, protons are not made of one gigantic ball. And they know this now because they can smash them into a bazillion little pieces. But when they do, they're looking through all these bazillion pieces, and they have no idea what, what they're finding. We started with light. I show the light, and I show the particles it make. And I show the 2P2H particle, Cornell, and all the rest of them wanted to see. We did it, then we separated the muon from the electron neutrino, created electron showers and muons. Now, light is an atomic dipole vapor. That's all it is. Light is a vapor, and it's a dipole particle. 
Now, that means that light makes all matter. All matter is made from light particles, which are nothing more than electrons back to back, which makes a photon. And then as you add a bunch of them together at 1839, they make a proton. 1840 makes a neutron. Now, so that means that light makes all matter. All right? If light is making up the electrons of a proton and a neutron, that means that light makes all matter. So what does that mean? That means that electron dipoles are the light. I showed them. I'll show them again in a second just to be sure you don't miss anything. That means, therefore, that's a little sign for therefore, means the universe and it totally is filled with matter, which is this atomic dipole vapor. It's the vapor in space. It's not empty. There's no vacuum out there. Therefore, there is no space vacuum. Therefore, light slows down as it comes through this non-vacuum. Because, oh, it's a vacuum. It just keeps going, never slows down. There's nothing for it to hit. That's insanity. That is absolute insanity. And I knew this 50 years ago, and that's why I got out of it because there was no talking to anybody. Once they get in control, and they won't let you talk, they won't let me talk today. They destroyed Velikovsky for talking. Tesla, same thing, destroyed him. Right now, I can create free energy, absolutely guaranteed. Within a couple of weeks, if we had a little bit of funding and a few specialists and some machine shop people and a few engineers and some money, that's what it takes. Instead, they spend billions a day walking around in circles and touting themselves for spending 20 years finding zero. Okay, once again, as always, I got interrupted about five times. I don't know if I showed you this yet, but this is periodic videos, and this is fabulous. Hydrogen explosions in slow motion. This guy is very good, and he's a good scientist. You know, he's got that uh, same Einstein looking hair, but he's still a good scientist. Watch this now. Look at that. Now that's hydrogen. If you look carefully, you can see that as the flame touches the balloon, the reaction goes really fast. The balloon lights up like an electric light bulb. Do you hear that? Don't forget that. Like an electric light bulb. Exactly like you're seeing at our Venturi. Exactly like an electric light bulb lighting up. Because we have fissioned just like this is fissioning the nucleus of the hydrogens. So each hydrogen is, is not just one big ball. The way they talk about hydrogen, the core being like one big proton like that, and then one little tiny particle outside here. Well, it's not. When they hit this, otherwise, what, what explodes? These things didn't explode. They're just walking away from it. No, they're made just like this. And when you touch it and throw in an extra electron, it says, whoa, 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 we can't get stable like that. And then it throws its electrons out, and then everybody, watch, it'll go, poof, woof. That's what happens. It goes, boof, and then it's, it, then that sends out its secondary, and then everything goes. Here we go, watch it. These are the kind of things you have to watch really carefully and see things. Now watch. Before it's lost its shape at all. See, watch now. And then it slowly spreads the, the now, bright right. light. All right, now is when it's going to say, all right, throw all those other electrons out, and, th and then everybody starts to split their particles apart, and that's when you really get the explosion. Which is much brighter yeah. than with the hydrogen yeah. by itself, because the reaction's going faster, so the temperature goes up much higher. Yeah. And what's interesting is that the flame separates into two parts, from right, because this one's pushing away and this one's pushing away because you started in the middle. And he does explain that. He understands that. But what they don't understand is that instead of being one big gigantic particle in that center, there's bazillions of these little tiny ones. And every one of them takes up a big region in space. And I can prove that too from outer space. Okay, I'm just going to leave it at that. This, I believe, is the Russians did this in space, and they fed electricity into some fluid, and it, it, you can see it expanding, and I believe it's the electrons taking up their own magnetic regions, pushing everybody away, and they'll just keep getting bigger and bigger. I think this was the initial shock, and it will fill up this whole sp space as these bubbles. 
as the electrons take up their own magnetic regions.